I've been teaching for over 15 years. And you know what I hate most about it? Preparing the slides. Every year, I teach a course called the Annual Review, where I lead a group of a couple hundred people through the process of completing their own annual life review. But the problem with it is it's also such a heavy lift because I have to create and customize the slides every time as my methodology and my philosophy evolves. So this year, for the first time, I used Gamma for that. This is me building something I'll actually use with real participants and real customers in just a few days here. Let me walk you through it. So I'm opening gamma.app here where you can see the main workspace with all the different slide decks that I've created recently. I always begin by clicking right here where it says create new with AI's help. And what you see here is three different options. Let me explain these briefly. Sometimes the starting point for your slides is text. It could be text from your note-taking app or from meeting notes with your team or from an email or really from anything. And in that case, you'll want to click paste in text and just paste, copy and paste the content right here as the starting point for your slides. In other cases, you don't have existing content. You may just have an idea or some random thoughts floating in your head. In that case, you can click generate. And for this one, you're really starting much more from a blank slate. Right? So you could just start typing right into this box and it will actually create an outline for you. And then the third option is to import a file. This can be a document, an existing presentation, a web page. So in this case, I actually want to have the course that I'm teaching directly reflect the content of my book. All right, so I'm going to head over here to the book I'm writing, which is in Microsoft Word, which honestly now feels like ancient technology. I'll do the first five chapters. So that's probably something like 15 to 18,000 words. Let me then go into the paste in text option, paste all of that content right there. There's a few other things that we can decide on. The first is what kind of document in the first place. Gamma can actually do web pages, documents, social media posts. I'm gonna stick with a presentation. And then you have the option to do a default kind of card format, but I personally tend to prefer the widescreen 16 by nine format. So I'm gonna choose that. And then down here at the bottom, you can see there's a few different options. If what you're pasting in is just like some rough ideas or bullet points, you actually want Gamma to expand on that content. So you would select this one right here. In this case, it's kind of the opposite. I actually have too much content, too much text, and I want Gamma to summarize that and distill it down into more succinct slides. And then the third one down here is sometimes you've pre-thought exactly what you want to say and you don't want the AI to mess with what you've written. You just want it to preserve this exact text. I'm going to click summarize and then we'll click this big blue button to continue to the prompt editor. In the second step here, the prompt editor gives you a few more options. We already selected this one, which was to condense. You can also tell it at four different levels how much detail, basically, you want it to, to include. You can be very minimalistic. Some presenters like to just have very, very short text, and then they kind of expand on that text in their speaking. Other people like a lot of details. Let's say you're sending this slide deck to someone who will not see it presented live. In that case, you want to preserve all the detail. I tend to pick Pick these two in the middle. And I think in this case, because I'm presenting this live, I'm going to choose concise. You can also choose your output language. I'm definitely going to stick with English. And then for the theme, I'm actually going to select one of our custom themes that we've already designed, which is the annual review theme. You can see it matches all of our branding, our text, our colors, everything. Let's head down here. You have a variety of options for your images. I always tend to choose AI images, so I don't have to worry about rights or royalty payments or anything like that. And then you can choose from a variety of different image models. You can see they're divided into basic models, advanced models, premium models, and then ultra models. To have access to these ones here, you'll need to be on Gamma's ultra plan. I tend to pick the Ideogram 3.0 option under premium models because that just seems like a well-rounded model that produces great images. You can choose the art style that you want to follow. Do you want it to be more photorealistic, more like an illustration, more abstract? I think I'm actually going to pick illustration since this is a more kind of right brain, intuitive, embodied experience that I want to create as part of my course. You can also add keywords. Do you want it to be minimalistic? Do you want it to be geometric? Do you want it to be bold or more subdued? The options are up to you. 
And then as we looked at before, you can actually choose different output formats and different aspect ratios. I'm gonna stick with the widescreen 16 by nine. I know I tend to spend something like one to two minutes per slide. To make sure I don't run out of time, I think I'm going to choose, let's do 30 slides or 30 cards. You can also add additional instructions, you know, like be sure to avoid certain kind of language or mention this word or don't mention that word. Now that that's all prepared, that took me, you know, maybe three to five minutes total. Let's go ahead and generate. So that took two and a half minutes. I kept track. We have a complete deck, which you can see here on the left. Let me expand that a little bit. 30 slides as we asked for with it looks like some sort of um, big idea slides where it's just like one thing that I wanna say. Others are more like frameworks, such as the four ways to access your emotions. Other ones are more like stories, which are stories that I include in my book. Four essential mindset shifts. We have the arc method. It took the initiative to create an image of an arc, which is actually a really cool visualization uh, of my method. I might actually use that in my book writing. These 30 slides that you see on the screen are really just a first draft. By no means do I have to either accept everything without questioning or reject it completely. There's a middle ground which is to really think of myself, and this is what I recommend you do, think of yourself as the creative director. Your role is to set the direction and let the system handle the great majority of the execution. I'm not the right person to be making the vast majority of those decisions. It has some neutrality and some kind of third person perspective to see the material often more objectively than I can. It is better at seeing it from the point of view of a beginner, whereas I sort of have the curse of the expert from looking at this so long. And this is where Gamma's agent really comes into play. So let me give you an example. One thing I already notice as I go through these slides is there's actually a little bit too much story I noticed that there's, you know, the breakthrough in Mexico City, the mistake I made at a luxury hotel, there's another one up here, first time that I did an annual review. That's a little bit overkill, right? I don't want to spend a third of the time that I'm presenting telling stories. So what I'm going to do is click the agent button up here at the top right, and down here at the bottom, I'm going to ask it to reduce the emphasis on my personal stories and instead focus on the practical preparation steps. And there we go. That took again about two minutes. And as I look through the slides, I can see the stories have been significantly de-emphasized just as I asked. Often when you have a message or a point of view or an argument that you're trying to communicate, you need proof. You need evidence. You need research-backed points to show that this isn't just your random opinion, this is something that has evidence behind it. All right, so let's look at an example. In the cases where I have a personal story, I don't really need a citation for that, but there are places where I make claims or assertions. So here's one. I state here, the basic forces that define your life, motivation, desire, commitment, resilience, all reside at the emotional level. That's a claim, that's an assertion, okay? The students in this course, they're skeptical, they're smart. They're not gonna take things at face value. They want to know, well, what is that based on? How do you know that? Prove it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is select this, and you can see that once I've selected it, it gets kind of inserted here in the agent dialog window. So now I can click right there and I could say, find credible scientific sources for this assertion. As that works, think about in the past what this would have looked like. Hours spent on the internet or on Google Scholar, hunting for credible sources, reading those sources, copying links back and forth, adding footnotes, making sure the footnotes are correctly formatted. I mean, so much of that work is necessary. It is very important to have evidence for your claims, but it's not really where you add the most value. It's not, it's sort of like a clerical administrative task much of the time and not something that you should be spending your precious time and attention on. So you can see the results here. It's added quite a bit more detail, uh, basically about brain structures like the limbic system, the amygdala, the prefrontal cortex, the different parts of the brain that uh, we have studied to know that things like motivation, desire, commitment, and resilience 
are profoundly rooted in our emotional processing systems. So you can see it's even made the language a little more scientific, a little more precise and accurate. As I look at this, I like what it's done, but I think it's now added too much text to the slide. So I think what I'm going to do is insert this scientific support as a footnote instead of in the main text of the slide. So you can see it's kept my original language since I liked that and added more as a footnote some of the additional scientific details. And I'm going to ask it to go even further and say, now add links to specific papers, articles, or books that validate these claims for people to research more on their own if they want. And you can see right there it's added links to a Columbia University study, a, a Washington University study, and others. And this is basically for people in my course to click and learn more if they want to dive deeper into these topics. You can use this research feature whether you're building a workshop for students like I am, or maybe you're creating a proposal for a client to do some work for them and you need some data backing up your proposal, or maybe you're developing internal training materials where the accuracy really matters. Sometimes you come across an article such as this one, which is about goal-directed behavior, and you want to integrate that into what you're presenting. What I can do is click Command L to highlight the URL, hit Command C to copy the URL, head back to Gamma, and I'm going to click in the agent window here and say, summarize this article and add a slide on it, and then I'll give it the URL. Notice that the agent is reading the article right now as we speak, identifying the most important key concepts, and then summarizing and translating them into a visual presentation format, all in one go. That took about two minutes. That seems to be the standard working time that it needs. And this is fantastic. Okay, so it's actually presenting the four main ideas or the four main findings from this article. Added a sentence about how this supports the idea that the brain's physical wiring supports flexible behavior and learning, which is a fantastic supporting point to what I'm teaching in my course. And then you can see it's added a citation to the original article there at the bottom. I hope what you're getting from all of these time-saving examples is not that you can shave off some minutes or hours here and there. I mean, that's important. It's really that it allows you to shift the time you're spending, to reallocate it away from administrative, clerical, junior stuff that honestly anyone in the world could do practically. And to spend that time and attention on the things where you add the most value. In my case, I know that that is teaching, it's coaching, and it's implementation. It's applying or translating these ideas into forms that people can immediately put to use in their own life. That's where I, as a teacher, need to be spending my time and attention. There's one more feature of Gamma that I want to show you. And this one has very practical business implications. This slide deck that I've just built with the help of AI is for our annual review course, which is all in English. But think about this. What if I wanted to also run a session in Spanish, either virtually online or even for my local community here in Mexico, where I live in a town called Valle de Bravo? Pre-AI, I would have to what? Hire a translator, or maybe a designer, have them manually translate slide by slide, sentence by sentence. I would have no way of checking their work, no way of knowing whether it's accurate. That would be very slow, very expensive, probably just not worth it. I probably just wouldn't do it at all. What we can do now with AI, once you have an existing slide deck, you can translate it into so many different languages, formats, different lengths and levels of detail like we talked about before. Let me show you how easy that is. So I'm going to click down here, uh, as usual, in the agent chat window, and I'm going to say, recreate this entire presentation in Spanish. And I'm also going to give it a, a persona, which is adapted for Latin American entrepreneurs. There we go. That took less than two minutes. It took less than one minute, actually. And you can see we now have the entire presentation in Spanish. And I speak Spanish, so I can verify that this is all correct. 
Notice that it kept the same formats, the same layouts, the same relationship between different blocks of text. It translated the headings, the subheadings. Now having done this, it's almost like I've unleashed, I have set free these ideas rather than being presented in a way that only is accessible to one audience speaking one language. I can now adapt this to any number of languages, to young people, to kids in school, or to retirees, to people who have a lot of context about annual reviews and personal development, people who have none. It's like the world, the, the universe of different kinds of people and kinds of audiences gets completely blown open by this ability to quickly and practically effortlessly change and dynamically adapt and translate your content to any audience that you can imagine. Let me connect this to the big picture. This presentation that I just built, back in my consulting days, this would have been three or more days of work minimum. Today it was less than 30 minutes. And that's not because I got faster and more efficient at designing slides. It's because I stopped designing slides. And I started, with the help of Gamma and its AI, started orchestrating a system and managing a system that designs for me. If you're spending hours perfecting slides instead of perfecting your thinking, Gamma offers a different approach, and it's completely free to start. The reason 50 million people use it, it's actually one of the most widely used AI tools in the world today, is because of the features that I showed you. But all those features are about one underlying principle, which is to enable you, to empower you, to stop being the graphic designer and to instead become the creative director of your life and your work. It's about freeing up your capacity to do the work and the thinking that only you can do and no one else. That's the shift that matters. Link is below if you want to explore it for yourself.